What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. So today we're going to be talking about a new feature that's coming out in release wave one of 2023, and it is co-authoring and collaboration of model-driven apps. So I wrote a blog post about this. Uh, this feature is going to be pretty useful, I think, for a lot of dev teams out there. Uh, so we're going to go through and see what these new features are. Uh, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So in order to enable this new functionality, what you'll need to do is come over here to the Power Platform Admin Center and select one of your environments that you want to enable this in. I'm going to do it in this environment here and go over to Settings. And then you'll need to go to Product and Features. And then scroll down. And here we have the uh, collaboration and co-authoring sections here. So the co-authoring one, this is one we're going to go through today. And you can see it in brackets, it says preview, uh, enable co-authoring, which lets people simultaneously edit model-driven apps together, right? And then this is what you'll want to turn on, okay? So just make sure that's turned on. And when you scroll down, make sure you click the save button as well down here. And then that's going to uh, activate that feature. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how to use it. So I wrote a blog post about this. You can see the link here. I'll put it down in the description. Uh, it kind of goes through the steps that I'm going to go through here. So if we go ahead and head over here to the Power Apps Maker Portal, what I have here is I have a really simple solution that I'm just using to demo this, this technology. And it just has one uh, app inside it, the Sales Hub app, okay? So I literally just added the Sales Hub app, the existing app into this solution. And I'm gonna go into this here and edit this app, okay? And what we'll, what I have also here is I also have two other users in the system who are also in the same solution, in the same app, okay? So, you know, very typical scenario, you're building out a, a new app and uh, you're, you have three developers in your team they're all contributing to the app at the same time. You know, what would happen in this scenario? What would it look like if, if you are all in the app using these new features, right? So uh, I'm just gonna go and flip over to the other to the other two. And uh, so we can see here, this is uh, a user I have here called Alan, and he's gonna go ahead and click into the app as well. And then I have here a user called Alicia, okay? And so she's also going to click into the app, okay? And my user is the first one, all right? So I'm in here, um, I'm gonna stay here on the screen as Alicia, let's see uh, what it looks like, okay? So we could see here in this top toolbar that uh, there are a couple of users that are already being displayed, right? So like I said, we already know that uh, Alan and myself are in the app, and so it's actually showing that on the top screen here. So I think straight away, this is, this is extremely useful because, you know, how often have you gone into an app to make changes and you don't know if your coworker is in there also making changes, right? So you might be working on the same item at the same time, and, but you just don't know and you have to send them a message, hey, are you working on this or not? You know, sometimes you don't communicate too well. So this is a great uh, addition here just to instantly tell us that there's other people here that are in the app, okay? Um, and then if you go ahead and click into one of these users, you'll see here that it has the uh, send email, uh, a send email button and a chat in Teams button. So you can very easily uh, kind of shoot them a quick message if you want to, to just say, hey, uh, you know, I see you're in the app, what's going on? So that's kind of the first thing that we see at the top. And then the next thing is here down on the left, you'll see we are both, uh, everyone has kind of joined the app at the same time. So everyone's showing here in this uh, next to the word app, right? They've all, this is kind of the entry point. And so everyone's here on the on the same app tab, okay? So we see Alan Steiner's in there and my and my username is in there. Uh, remember, I'm currently in here as, the, as Alicia. So let's say I go back to my user over here. Um, so now I'm, I'm back over with me. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and click into account views, let's say, right? So I am, you know, very typical scenario, I'm going into views, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change some of these views. So as soon as I click in here, now if I tab back over to Alicia, right? So I'm back over to Alicia now, and you can see I, my, 
my username here has been removed. So Elise is not seeing myself here in the app anymore. But if she were to go down and expand on the account, then she's going to see account views here and there's my icon there, right? So she knows like, hey, wait a minute, I'm uh, doing something to account views, right? And if I were to, uh, if Elisa were to click in account views here, then if I go and click over here, over to Alan, you can see now both of us have disappeared from here. But if, if Alan were to expand this, Alan would see uh, myself and uh, Alicia here as well, right? And just a kind of interesting point, you see my icon here is uh, my picture. Sometimes it displays as a, as a picture, sometimes as a uh, my initials. I think that's because I just kind of recently updated the photo. But uh, you get the idea. So you'll see uh, basically who's working on what at any given time, okay? Now, the other interesting thing is, uh, is actually seeing changes being made in real time, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna pull up one of these other guys. I'm gonna pull up uh, Elisa here, just kind of minimize it a little bit so that we can see. Uh, what I wanna show you here is I'm gonna change the name of Sales Hub here to something else. And you can see in the background here, um, Alan's user is displayed and he sees Sales Hub. So if I were to go into settings here, and let's just say I make this change of sales hub one, two, three, right? At this point, you know, you don't see that, no one sees the change, but if I tab off the field, right? Straight away, both people, Alan and Alicia are both seeing that change, right? So if we, you know, if I just kind of minimize this, we could see that um, Alan is, uh, you know, he, he's doing his work and, and automatically this is changed in the background. So I think that's kind of cool as well. Um, you know, again, real-time changes being made. There's, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this back. And as soon as I tab, tab off this again, right, we see it changes back again up here. So um, this, this is kind of useful. In some cases, when you make a change, it'll actually uh, ask you if you want to, if you like, that you need to refresh the page basically. So it'll give you that option to refresh. Um, so that's something to look out for. So let's go ahead and make another change here. So let's say, uh, this user here were to, let's see who's, this is Alicia. So let's say Alicia goes to add page here and let's say we go and add a new Dataverse table, right? So if I go ahead and just select any one of these, just keep an eye out here on the left in the background where uh, Alan is, right? So if I, go, if I go ahead and click add, right? Straight away, Alan's got this action call here that's appeared, right? And it has this little icon here, this sparkle icon, okay? so. And, and you see like on the, you know, the person that made the change here, Alicia, uh, has the, the new uh, table, but it does not have the sparkle icon, right? So really, you know, Alan's the guy that needs to know it's new because he didn't add it. And so he's gonna see these changes come through in the background. So I think that's a pretty cool feature as well. So now let's go ahead and look at comments. Uh, let's go ahead and click on one of these forms here. So I'm in one of these forms and uh, let's say that I, wanted to, let's say I'm working on this form and then let's go ahead and get another user into the form as well. So there's, uh, this is Alicia, she goes into the form here. And so then back over here, so, you know, uh, Alan sees that Alicia's in here. And so he's like, okay, well, you know, I, I could contact Alicia this way very quickly, or I'm going to, or I have the comments here. So I could go ahead and just put a comment in and you can see here, this is one of the older comments that was already on the form. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new comment here. And so this is Alan, and so I'm gonna say, hey, and then I do the at, and I can look up a user here, and I'm gonna look up Alicia. I can say, hey, Alicia, I see uh, you're making changes to this form. Uh, what are you working on? Okay. Go ahead and uh, control enter there. And then that's gonna go and uh, uh, put that comment in here. So now if I go back over to Alicia and uh, you can see that there's a little comment icon here for, for Alicia with one comment, right? If I go ahead and click on comments now, Alicia's gonna see this uh, this comment here and it, says, and it says what it says. And so she can go ahead and reply now to Alan and um, she could say, hi, Alan, uh, I'm working on 
working on the latest customization, right? And send that off. So they can just kind of go back and forth and collaborate and add some detail to, uh, to anything they need to here. You know, this is obviously a very simple example. Um, what you can also do here is you can, if I click on these three dots here, you can see that there is the ability to delete threads completely and there's the ability to resolve threads, right? So in this case, they might, they, they you know, may consider this resolved. They just go here and click resolved and now it's in a resolved state. It just means that next time someone goes in here, they know there's no action item to perform against it. And if there was an action item, if they needed to reopen it, they could just go ahead and click uh, reopen there. And it's just gonna set that, that, that thread back to a uh, active status here. So one more thing I wanna kind of mention here is if you go to the documentation on this, uh, here is the link for the documentation, co-authoring in preview. And if you scroll down, it'll give you some uh, more details about the co-authoring. Um, one thing I do wanna mention here is the limitations, right? So each of these, uh, these pieces of functionality has limitations. You can see here, there's no auto save functionality. So you need to select save button to save changes. Um, certain other things here. And if you go to, to this link here, discover who's working on an app, uh, this is what I, I went through in terms of, this is kind of the two pieces of functionality blended together. And, and so this is the co-presence, which has the, you know, who's working on what at a certain time. Um, the, uh, it talks about notifications here. And here is the co-presence limitations. There might be delays of 20 seconds. There might be a delay of a minute when someone says a change. Uh, making a comment triggers a background uh, save, uh, etc. Right. So there's some there's some things here that uh, you may just want to kind of be aware of. And if I go ahead and click back here, uh, comments. Then this is the documentation to the comments here, and um, this is kind of pretty self-explanatory. Not too many limitations with that. Right. So like I said, I think this is going to be kind of useful for some teams. Um, I'm I'm kind of excited about it myself. I, I think it'll just give a little bit of extra collaboration that, that some teams require. So excited to get this working in the real world. Let me know your thoughts below in the comments, what you think. Hope you enjoyed. So that's it guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at caldasusa.com. Thank you.